Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare Tool here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the Yakolith Yak-130. The Yak-130, known by the new reporting name as Bitten, is a subsonic two-seat advanced jet trainer and light combat aircraft, originally developed by Yakolith and Aramachi as the Yak-AEM-130. It has also been marketed as a potential light attack aircraft. Development of the aircraft began in 1991, and the maiden flight was conducted on April 25, 1996. In 2002, it won a Russian government tender for a training aircraft, and in 2010, the aircraft entered service with the Russian Air Force as an advanced training aircraft. The Yak-130 is able to replicate the characteristics of several 4th plus generation fighters, as well as the 5th generation Sukhoi Su-57. It can also perform light attack and reconnaissance duties, carrying a combat load of 3,000 kilograms, or roughly 6,600 pounds. So yeah, the Yak-130 year, basically the pinnacle trainer for the uh, Russian Air Forces. A really cool uh, looking jet and kind of the equivalent, I guess you can say to that, like the Goshawk or um, the um, T-38. Overall, really cool looking aircraft and um, it's going to make an awesome addition to any of your worlds if you're looking for some kind of cool training aircraft or if you just want some kind of simple light attack aircraft that's a relatively small size. So it should be a pretty easy tutorial to go through, and we don't have a whole lot of crazy stuff on it. It's pretty straightforward design, and one of those kind of nicer, smaller jets um, to uh, fit into some small spaces. But anyways, before we go and take a look at the build, I do want to go and give a special thanks to Patreon support Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. As always, if you're interested in supporting the channel more than I do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go and pledge a small amount to the channel every month, and in doing so, earn a vehicle request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel and is really greatly appreciated. And every month you're a patron, you do earn a vehicle of your choosing, uh, depending on your tier. So definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look at the Yak-130. So, getting to start with, we have it in its kind of darker gray color scheme. This is a little bit darker than the jet actually is, but just due to the limitations of Minecraft, we really don't have a good um, block that's just that perfect kind of middle between light and dark gray. Um, but yeah, I think it looks pretty good in this color scheme, at least, and looks pretty mean. Um, as you can see, some of my trapdoors are acting up a little bit there. But lots of good detail on it. We have all the front nose instruments, all that stuff. The canopy here, getting a bit larger since it is a two-seater. We then have uh, the munitions, munitions loadout, so we have some um, external fuel uh, pylons here. We also have some... Uh, you know, missiles and some uh, guided rockets and stuff like that. So, uh, quite a little a nice little compliment there, and uh, really nice for a trainer jet to kind of get trained on the different munitions we'd probably be using. As we progress further back to the tail, we have what would be the um, aircraft uh, number, but it looks like it's like a logo or something, which is kind of weird on the aircraft. It could just be Suk or uh, sorry, Yaks, uh, you know, a little symbol there, but kind of interesting there. And then it's also got the red star there. On the tail, uh, which is very common on all Soviet, um, or I should say all uh, Russian Air Force uh, aircraft. But overall, that's pretty much the jet. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. We do have a landed in-flight version. So you can see we have the landed version here. And then up above here, we do have the in-flight version. So those will be available to you guys both in the tutorial. So you'll be able to pick and choose if you want to have it landed or in flight. But uh, it definitely has a really cool front silhouette. Just realize that. Yeah, love the, love the different pylons and loadouts. I think it just makes the aircraft look so mean. Especially from the front there. Anyways though, uh, that's pretty much it for this overview. Let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layers. Alright guys, so moving into our first layers here, we're we'll going to be going ahead and moving into layers 1 and 2. A few quick things I want to mention regarding this tutorial is if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is we're building the center line of the aircraft and then the right side. It'll be up to you guys to copy the right side and transfer it over to the left side. Luckily this uh, aircraft here is for the most part completely symmetrical except I think one little minor thing in the nose and we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail once we get to that point. However, uh, with that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. Now, if you do want to build this landed, um, you will want to make sure that your first layers, layers one and two, are basically directly above the ground level. So layer one here is going to basically be um, this right here, and then layer two is where these slabs are going to be located. So basically, you want to pretty much be on the ground level. We're going to be starting with these slabs, which are going to be um, basically right um, at layer two here. 
So you can see one and two blocks and you can see how they come off there from the side. So again, that's if you want to build it landed because we will be building this aircraft as if it's in flight and then adding the landing gear on at the end as a modification to the in-flight version. So just keep that in mind when we're going through this. If you want the landed version, we will be doing that at the end of the video. Obviously, if you're building this in flight, you don't have to worry about it. Just make sure you're not going to hit the height limit or anything like that. Anyways, let's get started here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and place down a dark liquid trap door. This is going to be on the top portion of the block, so not on top of it, but you can see here kind of the side there, so it's going to be like that um, in regards to the block. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of polished blackstone top steps. This row is going to go all the way to the back here, a total of 16, and then we're going to go ahead and place down a dark liquid trap door on the end. And that right there is going to be your center line there for the aircraft. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and start working our way out to the sides here. Starting from the front, so this direction here is going to be our front. Either way, you can kind of pick and choose which way you want to have it face, but we're going to have the aircraft face that way. So this right here is going to be our front. We're going to count back one, two, three, four, five, six, and our seventh polished blackstone top slab. We're going to build a slab out to the side, and then back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Top slabs back from that, and then one and two dark oak with trap doors. After that's all complete, we want to go and then go back up to the front. We're going to place down two dark oak wood trap doors come out these two polished blackstone top slabs as well as one two and three top slabs and then one two and three dark oak wood trap doors after that is all complete we're going to go ahead and start working into our armaments and that's pretty much it for the fuselage the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go off this dark oak wood trap door here we're going to go ahead and build two blocks out to the side and then we're going to go ahead and then place down a gray concrete block we're going to delete these two blocks and on both sides of the gray concrete block we're going to place down a trip bar hook and then a wither skeleton skull will come off that block going toward the front we're going to go ahead and then go back from this block, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, great concrete blocks, and then a wither skeleton skull on the end there. And that's going to do it for that uh, external fuel tank. With uh, that out of the way, we want to go ahead and then go to our next, uh, we're going to place down another block out to the side here, so we're going to go to our second to last great concrete block, we're going to place down one block to the side here, and then a polished anside block, and then we can delete this first block here. We're going to go ahead and go forward from that polished anside block, 1, 2, and 3, blocks like so. We'll grab ourselves a skeleton skull. We're going to place it down on the front here of this block. We're going to place down stone buns on the sides of this polished anti block here. And same thing for this back one on the rear. At this point in time, um, if you're on Java, we'll go ahead and place down an iron trap door right here. And we can go ahead and use a special tool here called a debug stick. So we'll use the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. And by pressing enter, we'll get this glowing stick. We can left click the trap door until we get selected open false. And we can go ahead and right click it, open to true, and it should save, sit flat against the side there of that block, which really helps with the look of our missile pods. Unfortunately, there isn't really any good alternatives uh, if you're on a different version. Um, you could use the dark oak with trap doors, but uh, obviously the iron trap doors here are going to be the best. You can always try to hide like a lever or something to manually have it open or close however you want to look at this. But uh, unfortunately, that's just how it kind of is. Um, I'm sure there's some ways maybe around it for other versions, but that's just how we have to go about doing it here for um, us shallow players. Anyways, though, uh, one thing I also want to cover here is for the bottom of this rear here for the uh, external fuel, fuel, fuel tank here. We're going to go and place down a block underneath this last block, and then just a wither skeleton skull to both sides of that block, and then we'll just delete it like so, and that's basically it. So pretty straightforward, and that right there will complete that. We're also going to go in, um, actually, my bad, we're not going to do that. We're just going to leave it as is. With that all done, uh, we then have our uh, kind of missile here. So for our missile, uh, pretty simple stuff. We're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and placing down a um, quartz top slab. That's going to basically be one block of space from this second polished anti block here from the front. And then we're going to place down our quartz top slab. We're going to go and then delete that block and you have something that looks like this. We're going to place down the skeleton skull come off that slab toward the front. Birchwood fence gate to both sides of the slab here. And then we're going to go and then place down two end rods back. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a smooth quartz top slam. And we're going to go ahead and place down a virtual fence gate to both sides of the top slab. Come off those fence gates, we're going to place down a birchwood sign. Sign here, sign there. We're going to go ahead and grab an item frame. We're going to place down an item frame. Come off this block like that. And we then want to go ahead and place down a black concrete block in that item frame. We also can go ahead and take a birchwood sign, and we can place it on the side here for Java players. Just note that placing that birchwood sign is only available for Java players. If you are on a different version, you will not be able to place the sign, and you can just go ahead and do the item frame and um, call it good. Anyways, though, that right there is going to wrap up everything we have there for layers 1 and 2 for the build. Just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything, and everything does appear to be good to go. So again, taking a look at it from above here, this is what you should have for the top-down view. 
And with that, that will conclude layers one and two, and we'll move on up to layers, or layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three, to go ahead and get started with, you're gonna place down a polished black, or rather first a piston for Java players on this dark oak trap door here. Um, if you do not have access to a debug stick, which we will be using in uh, relation to this uh, piston, I would recommend going ahead and placing down a polished blackstone stair instead. And um, yeah, you'll just have the stair with the back toward the rear and the stair kind of going like that. So um, that's a good alternative, but the piston here, again, preferred job players if you have access to the debug stick. We're going to go then place down a polished blackstone slab coming off that going forward. Going back from this block, we're going to place down a row of gray concrete. This row in total is going to go back a total of 18 blocks. We're going to go and then place down a upside down piston like so, again for Java players. If you're on a different version, uh, you can place down a polished black stone stair that kind of goes like that. So that's a, again, an alternative for you. And then we'll place down a polished black stone top slab and then a dark oak with trap door after that top slab. Once that's done with our center line, we're going to go and then work our way out to the sides here. We're going to place down a um, wither skeleton skull that's going to go on the side of this piston here. And then we're going to go back from this with two uh, gray stained glass panes, then two uh, diorite walls, and then one, two, three polished black stone walls, followed by a block of concrete, of uh, black concrete, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven gray concrete blocks back. We're going to go and then place down a black concrete block here, and then a polished, or sorry, a wither skeleton skull in, uh, or come off that block like so. Go into the tail here of the aircraft, we're going to go ahead and go to the side of the piston and the top side, we're going to place down two dark oaker trap doors followed by a second row of two out to the side. In this row on the back here, we're gonna place down one more that comes off like so to go ahead and create our start there of our horizontal stabilizers. With that done, going back up to the front here, uh, we wanna go ahead and go to our intakes here. And for our intakes, we're gonna go ahead and place down a dark oak trap door on top of this trap door here and open it to the side like so. We're gonna go then place down a black concrete block behind that, as well as a row of one, two, three, four, five, and six gray concrete blocks back. We're gonna follow it up with a polished black stone wall, then a white stained glass pane, and then a uh, gray stained glass pane directly after that. And that right there will basically help form up the sides there. And then continuing on, we're gonna take our light gray, or sorry, just our normal gray stained glass panes, and we're just gonna place down one, two, three, four, and five along the side there of the intakes. With uh, that all done, uh, that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for our fuselage. Uh, we will return to some stuff in the front there a little bit later. Um, but anyways, continuing on, we're going to go ahead and then work on our pylons here, which are pretty straightforward and simple to do. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start off by placing on a polished black stone slab on top of this block here. And then we're going to then go back from that with one, two, three, and four polished black stone walls, and then a light gray stained glass pane. We're going to do the same thing we did for the bottom here, for layer one on this back here. We're going to place on a block above the last block, and then a wither skeleton skull to both sides. And then we'll delete that center block like so, and that pretty much makes our uh, fuel pod there. After that, uh, we're going to go then place down a polished blackstone slab, which is going to go on top of this full block here, as well as two polished blackstone walls, and then a gray stained glass pane. And then lastly, we're going to place down an air polished blackstone uh, slab on top of this quartz slab here, and then two polished blackstone walls back from it to go ahead and make our pylons, which the uh, armaments connect up to. Once we have that all out of the way, uh, we're going to go ahead and then go to our front piston here for us Java players. We're gonna go ahead and left click this until we get selected extended falls pop up. By right clicking it, we can actually get rid of that uh, wood portion and it really helps with the front sloping there of the aircraft. Again, um, it's not a total necessary thing. You can easily replace it with a polished blackstone stair instead, but uh, again, the shaping is just a little bit better. We will, however, not do it to the back piston because if you do update the block space above the piston, so for example here, we set it to its normal state, we place a block on top of it, it will revert back. So we're going to leave that alone for right now until we're pretty sure we're not going to mess up anything around it and um, all that. So we're going to leave that alone. But we do have some stuff in the front here I do want to go ahead and cover. The first uh, bean is this little uh, design here. Now this is going to be a little uh, trick that we can do for us Java players. If you are not on Java, then you can go ahead and use a wither skeleton skull in place of this, um, this redstone or this trip bar hook here. Um, so you can place down Wither Skeleton Skull here coming off the glass pane and then a chain coming off of it. If you're on Java though, we can use a cool technique here by going ahead and placing a block that's basically a space from this glass pane. So you have a space of one in between. We're going to place down a tripwire hook on the side of this block. We're going to left click the lever or the tripwire hook until we get selected facing. Should say a direction. We're going to go ahead and right click it until it rotates and it basically looks like it connects up to our glass pane here. Then we're just going to place down a chain coming off of it 
And just like that, we have that little detail there on the side for those little instruments. Looks really good, and the tripwire hook here is really kind of the best way to do it. Um, the wither skeleton skulls obviously are a little bit bulky, but a good alternative rather than using that um, little modded trick there. We do have one more thing I'm also going to cover, and um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the necessary materials for that. So the next thing I want to cover here is going to be on the bottom section right here, and this is going to be on the right side and the right side only of the aircraft. If you are not on Java, we can place down a wither skeleton skull here and then an end rod coming off of it. It'll work all right, kind of does what we need it to do. However, if you are on Java, we can go ahead and make this look a little bit nicer. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna place in a block like so, a lever on top of that block. We're gonna go and then left click the lever until we get selected face. It should say floor, we're gonna go and right click it and then it should connect to face to ceiling and it should sit on the bottom of this glass pane. And if you need to, you can go ahead and left click it again a few times until you get selected facing and you can rotate it just like we did for the tripwire hook, but you want it basically pointing forward like so. Coming off of this uh, lever, we're going to go then place down an end rod like so, and it'll create that little extra instrument there on the front. And again, that's going to be on the right side and the right side only. You will not place it on the left side, and that's like the one main difference we actually have between the two sides of the aircraft. Anyways though, that is going to conclude everything we have there for layer 3, and with that, let's go ahead and move on to layer number 4. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 4. For layer 4 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and begin with placing down a polished blackstone button on top of this gray concrete block here in the front. We're going to go ahead and place down a polished blackstone slab, or slab, like so, and then we're going to place down a row of four of black stained glass um, full blocks. We're going to go then place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen of these gray concrete blocks back, followed by a piston. Instead of the piston, you can go ahead and place down a dark liquid stair, or not dark liquid, sorry, a polished blackstone stair, which will be facing this direction like so. So the back of the stair here, and it kind of goes forward like that. We're going to go then place down a polished blackstone slab after that piston. Once that's done, going back up to the front here, we're going to place down a black stained glass pane coming off this first block, then another brick wall after that, and then we're going to place down a daylight detector, turn this to night mode, followed by a polished blackstone slab, a piston. Instead of the piston here, you can place down a polished blackstone stair. This can be placed down, um, here I'll kind of show an example here. You can place down the stair like that instead, uh, but for us, we'll use the piston. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 gray concrete blocks back, then two polished black stone stairs, and then we're going to place down 1 and 2 gray stained glass panes, and then a wither skeleton bolt like this coming off the side of the piston here. After that, uh, we can go ahead and then go to the piston for debug stick here, and we can right click it, as we will not be touching the sides there of it, so we can go ahead and do that. And also on the bottom here as well, we can go ahead and right click this piston as well, getting rid of that wood portion. And, um... Yeah, that right there will do it for the back there. Then continuing on, we're gonna go ahead and place down a pole, or sorry, dark oak with trap door coming off this slab here. Then a daylight detector, which we're gonna turn to the night mode, like so. Make sure you do fix your trap doors if they do get a little wonky. We're gonna go and then place down a polished blackstone slab after that. We're gonna follow that up with a row of one, two, and three of dark oak, or sorry, polished blackstone stairs. Then a row of two of polished blackstone slabs, and then two daylight detectors. We're gonna go and turn those daylight detectors there to the night mode. We then also want to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame. So we'll go into our creative menu, we'll grab an item frame, we're going to place it on the side of the stair. In that item frame, we're going to place down a black concrete block. And if you're on Java, we can go ahead and go the extra little addition here by placing a dark liquid sign on the side there of the stair as well. After we have that done there, we're going to go ahead and focus on our horizontal stabilizers. This is going to begin with one, two, and three trap doors across this row here. And then we're going to place down one trap door in this section. We want to go and then place down one, two, like so. And we're going to go and then place down a second row. One, two, and then one come off the side there, like that. And that will make your horizontal stabilizer. With uh, that complete there, we're going to go and then place down a daylight detector. That's going to be coming off the front here of this stair. We're going to turn that to night mode. And we want to go and then place down one, two, three, and four. Polished blackstone slabs back. Two daylight detectors again, turn to night mode. We're going to place down another daylight detector here, turn it to night mode, two polished blackstone slabs. So after those two polished blackstone slabs, we're going to go ahead and then place down two daylight detectors, turn them to night mode, and then we're going to place down a dark liquid trap door after that. Or rather, sorry, actually another daylight detector, so you have a total of three there. Next row here is going to be a daylight detector coming off this slab. We're going to turn this to night mode, and we then want to go ahead and place down um, a total, or actually, sorry, it's going to be one slab coming off this one. So you have two slabs here. Then we have three, four, and five. We're gonna turn these all to the night mode, like so. After that, we're gonna go then place down a dark liquid trapdoor on the end here. 
Our next row here is going to be a row of three. So we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three. We're going to turn these all to the night mode and then two dark oakwood trap doors. We're going to go ahead and place down a dark oakwood trap door coming off the center daylight detector. We're going to go ahead and go back three more, save our total of four. We then want to go ahead and start from the back here. We're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three trap doors forward. We then want to place down a dark oakwood trap door here, acacia wood trap door, and another dark oakwood trap door. And then we're just going to place down one and two dark oakwood trap doors like so. And then lastly, we're going to place down a row of one, two, and three of these polished blackstone slabs going forward. We're going to go and then place down a block. That's going to kind of be one block below this slab here. And we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull on top of that. And then we'll just delete that black concrete block. Also, uh, on the bottom here of these slabs, we're going to go and place down a row of dark oakwood uh, trap doors as well, just like that. And once you have that all done there, we also want to go and go to these pist this piston right here. We're going to go and right click it with our debug stick there to go ahead and um, get rid of that wood portion and once you have that all done that right there is going to basically conclude layer number four uh, You'll again take the same thing do on the air side and this we should have from the top-down view as you can see for the most part Your aircraft's kind of done. We just have kind of the top of the canopy here the spine and the tail to do So we're getting close to finishing this build off but kind of the main portion of it's really out of the way at this point in time With that though, let's go into go into our next layer layer number five. All right guys moving into our next layer We have layer number five for layer 5 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to start off by going ahead and going to our second to black stained glass block. We're going to place down an air brick slab on top of it. We're going to then go back 1, 2, and 3 black stained glass full blocks, followed by a gray concrete block, and then a piston. Again, an alternative to the piston is you can use a um, stair instead of polished black stone stair. We're going to then place down two polished black stone slabs, three daylight detectors turned to night mode, and then a dark group of trap door. After that, we're going to place down a polished black stone stair. Then two of these um, polished diorite blocks like so, a gray concrete block on the end here, and they're going to place down a dark oak wood trap door on top of this piston here, which will cause the piston to um, reactivate. So make sure you just go ahead and right click that again to uh, reset it. After that's all done, uh, we're going to go ahead and then go up to the front and work our way out to the sides. We're going to place down a polished, or sorry, first off a wither skeleton skull at a slant angle on top of that narrow brick wall there. And then we want to go ahead and go back one, two, three black stained glass paints. You, this piston here will reactivate, so make sure that you re-adjust re, um, it with the with the uh, piston, or with the uh, debug stick. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a gray stained glass paint here next to it. On both sides of this piston here, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull. We can use our debug stick here again to set it, get rid of that wood portion. And then after the wither skeleton skull, we're going to place down two dark oak with trap doors back from that. Lastly, for this layer, we're just going to place down a polished black stone button on both sides of this um, polished direct block and once you have that all done right there that's going to complete everything we have there for layer five and with that we'll probably just go ahead and move into our last final layers to finish off the in-flight version of the tutorial all right guys so moving into our uh final layers here we have layers six through eight these layers here are really straightforward and pretty simple to do uh what we're going to start off with doing is we're going to go, and go to the middle um black stained glass block here in our canopy and we're going to place out a daylight detector, turn that to night mode, and then a dark oak wood trap door directly behind it. And that right there will finish the canopy. With that out of the way, we're going to go and then focus our attention here to the rear of the aircraft. We're going to go and go on top of this polished direct block. We're going to place down a polished black stone stair, two gray concrete blocks back, and then a gray stained glass paint. We're going to go and then go up from this gray concrete block with another stair, followed by a gray concrete block back and a polished black stone wall. We're going to go ahead and go up to our last row, which is going to be a polished black stone stair on top of this gray concrete block, and then a gray concrete block behind the polished black stone stair, just like that. And once you have that all done right there, that's going to pretty much make your tail. Now, we do have one last thing to cover, and that is going to be making this star banner on the side of the aircraft, so I will be showing you guys how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the necessary materials to make that banner, and I'll be right back to show you guys how to make that red star banner. All right, guys, so when it comes to making this banner, we're going to be going ahead and using a loom, red, a red banner, four gray dye, two red dye in the banner pattern. This is going to be the flower charge. To get started with this banner, super simple. We're going to place down our loom. We're going to go, and go into our loom, place a red banner and gray dye. We're going to do the horizontal line of gray that goes right through the center of the banner like so. We'll grab that banner, put it back into our loom, remove our gray dye, place our red dye in the loom, and then our banner pattern. We're going to go ahead and then get this symbol that looks like this. We'll grab that banner, put it back into our loom, remove our red dye, and remove this banner pattern. You will not need it anymore. We're going to go ahead and place our gray dye back into the loom. We're going to do the line that's across the top third horizontally of the banner. So it looks like this. We'll grab that banner, we'll remove our gray dye, put our red dye back in, and we're going to go ahead and then do the diamond in the center, like so. So it's going to create the top portion of the star here. 
We'll grab that banner, put it back into our loom with our gray dye this time. We're going to go ahead and do the triangle that comes up from the bottom. So it looks like this. And then we're going to go and then do the horizontal line that's going to go across the lower third of the banner. Just like this. And once you have that all done right there, you get this gray banner here with the red star. Really straightforward. And it's just going to go ahead and go on this gray concrete block on both sides there for that Soviet um, logo. Or I should say the Russian Air Force logo. With that all out of the way though, that is going to complete the in-flight version there for the Yak-130. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and now move on to the landing gear. So I'll be showing you guys how to put the landing gear on for those of you that do want the landing version. But again, if you are here just for the in-flight version, you are pretty much good to go. With that though, let's move into the landing gear. Alright guys, so moving into our landing gear. Our landing gear is overall really simple on the aircraft. For us to get started though, we're going to be going ahead and going to this front section here. And we want to go ahead and go back one, two, three, and our fourth polished blackstone top slab. We're going to go and remove this top slab, and in its place, we're going to place down a stone brick wall. We're going to go and place down a dark oak sign on both sides of the wall, like so. And we're going to then go down from the wall and back at an angle. We're going to place down a block of coal, a lever coming off the block of coal like this toward the front. And then we have this banner design here. Now, it's pretty simple. I'm not going to show you guys how to make it in a loom just because it's so easy. It's basically just a light gray banner, or you can choose whatever color you want the rims of the wheels to be. So you can do dark gray, you can go ahead and do white, you can do whatever you really want there. Uh, but for the aircraft, it seems it's like a light gray color. So what we have here is a light gray banner. We have a black border and the black horizontal line for the center. That's really it. Pretty straightforward. And you'll just place it down on the side here of the uh, block of coal. And you can see it kind of creates a nice uh, look there for the wheel and just kind of gives a little bit more detail. Um and all that so that right there is pretty much it for that and we'll go ahead and now move on to the rear wheels and lastly we have our back wheels we're going to go ahead and do next now our back wheels here again pretty simple design we'll be going ahead and going to this section here in the aircraft we're going to go and delete these two dark oak with trap doors and then this one polished blackstone on top side now in its place we're going to go and place down a uh dark oak or sorry birchwood fence gate that's going to go here it's going to open toward the front we're going to go then place down a stone brick wall with a stone brick top side on the bottom of that wall and then an item frame coming off this wall facing forward, and then a snowball in the item frame like that for some landing lights. We're also going to place down a polished uh, black stone upside down stair coming off the wall there, and then we're going to place down one more that goes forward like so, coming off this glass pane. And after you have that done, that's going to kind of form the main gist of our landing gear system. And lastly, we just have the wheel, which is going to be a block of coal coming off this top slab here, and then a light gray banner coming off of it to the side there like so to go ahead and make that wheel... Um, design there so that right there is pretty much it looking at it from the side here this is what you should have uh, you'll take that same design there for that wheel and copy it over to the other side and once you do you'll have the landing gear complete for the yak 130 anyway so that right there is going to wrap up my tutorial here for the yak 130 mitten hopefully you guys do enjoy this aircraft and are able to put it to good use our first ever russian trainer jet so that's kind of cool and kind of a uh, cool looking aircraft to say the very least and really happy the way it came out it looks very modern and kind of a nice uh light um aircraft with that all out of the way, though, I want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon support Derek Frost Whisper for making this tutorial possible. As always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. If you do end up using this design, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for this. Anything from a sign of the bill to my channel or this video, if this does appear on social media sites, as long as you guys give me proper credit for it, your free use of forever projects you guys are working on. And with that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett 204, and I'll see you guys next time.